Welcome back to AP Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug and I've been teaching AP Chemistry for over 20 years. And in this video, we're learning about how to write net ionic equations, but we're looking at some special cases. There are actually a few special cases that you need to be aware of when you're writing net ionic equations. Now here is something that takes place. There are three substances that do not exist, as far as we're concerned, at normal temperatures and pressures. So if you see these substances that pop up as a product in your reactions, you need to write them differently. This is something called a gas evolution reaction. And we have these three substances. So H2CO3, carbonic acid, does not really exist at normal pressures and temperatures. What happens is it will just spontaneously undergo this reaction into water, and carbon dioxide gas. And that's what you need to have in the back of your mind whenever you see carbonic acid. Sulfurous acid, H2SO3, is very similar to that. It does something similar. It breaks down to produce water and sulfur dioxide gas. You just need to have that in the back of your mind when you see H2SO3. And likewise, ammonium hydroxide doesn't really exist at normal pressures and temperatures. It breaks apart into water, liquid, and ammonia gas. And so we'll see how these three gas evolution reactions sometimes pop up as we're writing net ionic equations. So let's try an example here where we have to do something like this. Let's take some solid baking soda, which is sodium bicarbonate, and we're going to pour that into a beaker containing a solution of vinegar, which is dilute acetic acid. So we're going to take the first substance here, sodium bicarbonate, and write it down. Now, you might notice that it's in solid form. In most of these reactions, it's in solution form, but in this case, since it's solid, we have to write it as a solid. It hasn't been ionized yet, so we have to write it as NaHCO3, sodium bicarbonate, sometimes called sodium hydrogen carbonate. Next, we have vinegar, which is acetic acid, and that is a weak acid, isn't it? So we can't write it in its ionized form. It is written together. Weak acids are always written together. So there's acetic acid, and these ions are gonna try to swap, aren't they? The sodium is gonna try to get with acetate, and the hydrogen is gonna try to get with hydrogen carbonate. And so our question is, which of these will actually make something? Well, sodium, once it's ionized in the solution there and it gets with acetate, well, it's not really gonna make anything, is it? All acetates are soluble. So that won't make a solid precipitate. It's gonna be in ion, an ion form. But H and HCO3, that makes H2CO3, doesn't it? So those are the two that are actually gonna make something. And that's H2CO3. And then we have the ions that are produced, the sodium ions and the acetate ions. Now notice, we have one of those substances in our gas evolution processes there. So carbonic acid doesn't really exist at normal pressures, so I'm gonna cross that out and replace it with what's really there, which is carbon dioxide and water. Now, if we look at this reaction, are there any spectator ions that we can cancel out? Well, no, they're not because sodium was in solid form earlier, so it, it's not able to be canceled over here. So really there are no spectator ions in this process. We just have to write the whole thing out, and this is what it looks like. We have sodium bicarbonate solid, and acetic acid, which is aqueous, produces water, liquid, and carbon dioxide gas, and sodium ions, and acetate ions. So that's kind of a long net ionic equation, but that is what happens here. It looks like that is balanced based upon uh, what I can tell at least. Now, this is a reaction that you may have done before. At home, maybe for a science fair or something, you can actually pour baking soda into vinegar, and you've probably seen this reaction. It produces those uh, bubbles. And what are the bubbles? Well, we've seen here, they're bubbles of carbon dioxide. So we're making carbon dioxide when you make the baking soda and vinegar volcano or that reaction. Let's try another one here. A few drops of sodium hydroxide solution are added to a beaker containing aqueous ammonium chloride. So we'll do the same thing. We'll start with sodium hydroxide. And that's a, weak, that's a strong base, rather. So we're gonna have to write it in its ionized form. 
like that, sodium ions and hydroxide ions. And then we have ammonium chloride. And that's certainly a soluble compound. Anything that has ammonium on the front of it is soluble. So I'm going to write that in its ionized form. It's dissociated. And once again, the sodium is going to try to get with chloride, and the ammonium tries to get with hydroxide. And which of those will make something? Well, we know that uh, sodium and chloride ions aren't going to make a precipitate, are they? That's soluble. But ammonium and hydroxide, those are going to get together. And so that would give us ammonium hydroxide and sodium ions and chloride ions. But you might notice that ammonium hydroxide is one of our three compounds that don't really exist at normal pressure. So we're going to cross that out and replace it with what's really there. Do you remember what's there? It's, we know it's water. It's also ammonia gas. And so those are the products that are formed, water and ammonia. So are there any spectator ions here? Well, I see a couple. It looks like the sodium ions and the chloride ions are present on both sides. So those are spectators. I can eliminate those from the net ionic equation. And when you write the full thing, you're going to have ammonium ions and hydroxide ions combining to produce water and ammonia gas. And so if you carry this reaction out, you actually take a little sodium hydroxide and, and a dropper and put that into ammonium chloride, you're going to smell something. You're going to you're probably not see something, but you'll smell this gas being produced. And what is that gas? Well, it is ammonia gas. And that has a very distinctive odor. Well, I hope you learned something about gas evolution reactions, and I hope you were able to hone your skills in writing net ionic equations in this video. I'm Jeremy Krug, and this is my uh, chemistry channel. I'm posting a playlist with the entire AP Chemistry curriculum, the entire AP Chemistry course. And so uh, sign up and uh, hit subscribe if you haven't already done so. Ring that bell so that you're uh, notified of any future videos, and give me a like if you learned something about net ionic equations in this video. Join me again, or where we can learn some more chemistry together.